like a lot of medievalists, I'm interested in how things started. A really important part of that is how people became Christian. But in order to find out what sort of Christians they became, we have to know what sort of people they were before. And it's, it's a real challenge, it's a real puzzle, because pagan people didn't write down the stories which preserve their myths. So we have to reconstruct their worldview from these scattered sources. If we want to understand what pre-Christian culture was like in Northern Europe, Old Norse gives us a unique insight into it. In England, the conversion from paganism to Christianity happened at the end of the 6th century. That's a bit too early to have left any real documents about what pre-Christian culture was like. But then in Scandinavia, we have a long process of conversion from paganism to Christianity, and literacy didn't arrive until the 11th century. So the manuscript record starts much later than in England, and we have a much bigger and better collection of stories about the Norse gods and, and, and legendary heroes. The most famous works of Old Norse literature are the Icelandic sagas, which um, are a, an almost unique form of kind of prose fiction. We also have a large body of poetry from Iceland. When we look at the literature that survives, we have a very rich mixture of elements of paganism and elements, elements of Christianity because the Christian Icelanders wanted to preserve their indigenous culture but present it in a way which was acceptable to the new faith. We can get some interesting insights into how different religions relate to each other, interact with each other, and how this has been a recurring problem. There are so many more texts that haven't been fully studied. Old Norse presents some really great opportunities for graduate students because there is so much out there. And so I'm very keen to work with students who want to take the whole of medieval Nor Northern Europe in into consideration as being a region which is interdependent, on, which has all these interesting relationships going on within it. The Middle Ages haven't really ended because we carry so much of their influence with us today. Cultures evolve very slowly, very gradually. Identities are constantly being reinvented, but we are definitely part of an unbroken tradition going back to the way the medieval people explored the universal questions which we've been trying to address for the whole of, of human history. Where we came from, why are we here, what are we going to do with our lives, how should we lead a good life? And I think that this is a really important part of the way we approach medieval studies at Notre Dame, is to look at this unbroken tradition, the fact that one thing leads to another, and although change is constant, we've got these universal threads running throughout.